This video describes a new procedure in Stack Graphics 19 that performs piecewise linear regression. Piecewise linear regression fits a model to a single quantitative dependent variable y and a single quantitative independent variable x. The model consists of two or more linear segments which form a continuous function. As an example, I've loaded into the Stack Graphics 19 data sheet a file with information about 93 different makes and models of, of automobiles. I'm going to start by showing you a plot of two columns in that data sheet. I'll select plot, two-dimensional XY plot. On the X axis, I'm going to put the miles per gallon in highway driving for each of the automobiles and on the x-axis, I'll put their horsepower. When we create the plot, you'll see a strong relationship between miles per gallon and horsepower, and a relationship that's clearly not linear. To get an idea of what the relationship looks like, I'll go up to the ribbon bar and press Smooth. Then I'll ask for a robust lowest smooth to be placed on the plot. I'll reduce the fraction, the smoothing fraction, a little bit. And when I bring it down around 30%, you'll see what looks like three linear segments in the data. There's one segment for cars with horsepowers between full, about 50 and 90, a second segment between 90 and 180, and a third segment for cars with horsepower of 180 or greater. What I'm going to show you next is how I can fit a piecewise linear regression to this data set. You can see here the model I want to fit to this data. It's going to be a piecewise linear model with three segments. If x is less than or equal to some value delta 1, we'll call that the first breakpoint, there's a simple linear model, y equals beta naught plus beta 1 times x, which consists of an intercept and a slope. If x, in this case horsepower, is between delta 1 and the second breakpoint delta 2, the model will be that first linear segment plus beta 2 times the difference between x and delta 1. And that's basically a change in the slope. Finally, if x is greater or equal to delta 2, the second breakpoint, there's a second slope change, beta 3. We're going to ask the program to find optimal values for beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, delta 1 and delta 2. Let's go back to Stack Graphics now and have it fit that model. To do so, I'll go to the top menu to Relate, and in the One Factor section, select Piecewise Linear Regression. The Y variable is miles per gallon in highway driving. The X variable is horsepower. On the Analysis Options dialog box, it's going to ask me for some important information. First off, it's going to ask me how many segments I want to fit, and I'll tell it three. It's then going to ask me for initial estimates of the breakpoints and the slope changes. Now, it turns out that when you fit a piecewise linear regression, and it's going to do so using nonlinear least squares, it's important to give it good estimates of at least the breakpoints. I'll tell it that I think the first breakpoint is around 90, the second breakpoint around 180. I could have it fit the model exactly at those breakpoints, or as I'm going to do, have it optimize the locations at which the segments join. I could give it initial estimates of the slope changes, although it turns out that usually if you at least have the right sign, positive or negative, on the slope change, 
you can find a global optimum. We'll now press OK. And you'll see the list of tables and graphs is very similar to what you see in most regressions. You have options for fitted values and residuals, for influential points, for residual plots, and so forth. Let's go ahead and press OK. And it will now show us the results of the fit. As you can see, the fitted model has three distinct linear segments near the locations we expected. To actually see the values of the breakpoints and slope changes, I can look over here at the analysis summary. The change point number one, what I call the breakpoint number one, is estimated to be about 95.4. That's about where we thought it was. The second change point is 144.9, a little bit less than our initial estimate of 180. You can check whether each of these coefficients is statistically significant by looking at its asymptotic 95% confidence interval. If the confidence interval for a coefficient does not include zero, then that coefficient is statistically significant at the 5% significance level. In fact, all of the confidence intervals do not contain zero with the exception of slope change number two. The confidence interval for slope change number two goes from minus 0 0.015 to plus 0.156, implying that the second slope change is not statistically significant. In that case, I might want to go back to the plot of the fitted model, press the right mouse button, select analysis options, and ask it to fit a model with only two segments. That also appears to do a good job in modeling this particular data set. Now, there's a couple other things I want to do. First, I'm going to push the right mouse button and go to pane options. Here, I can tell it to plot prediction limits, for example, at 95% around this particular model. 95% prediction limits tell me where I am 95% certain new observations would fall if, in fact, this particular model is correct. You'll notice that most of my points are within or very close to the prediction limits, with the exception of one, this point right here. And if I hold the mouse down, it'll show me that that is row 42, a car with 102 horsepower, 46 miles per gallon in highway driving. Well, after clicking on that point, if I go over to the data book, it will have highlighted that row. And in fact, that turns out to be a Honda Civic. Why that car doesn't behave the way the others do, I'm not sure. But I could, if I wanted, then go up to the ribbon bar, press exclude, and have it fit the model without that data point. Turns out it doesn't have much effect on the model, but it is at least interesting to see what would happen.